Hey, good morning. My name is Angie Morenga and you're watching Just Angie. And today is Sunday, so this is a Sunday message. And I want to take it from Genesis uh, 1, 27 to, 27 to 28. And let me read, it says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And my message today is about the 12 blessings of the season. Why? Because God created us to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue the world, to replenish, to put it back in his order and just to be to really enjoy life. And even John 10, 10 says that he came so that we could live life and live it more abundantly. So there are 12 blessings of the season. Let me first mention all the blessings and then go back to all of them. These blessings you need to decree over yourself, over present and over future generations. Um, the blessings are salvation, healing and deliverance. And then there's obedience a restoration, an apostolic and prophetic establishment. Then there is overflow, abundance, and fruitfulness. And then God's glory, God's honor, and God's power. Then I'm going to go back. Now, when you're decreeing all these blessings over yourself, please decree over them, decree them over these areas of life because this is what makes up the sum total of man's life and of humanity. Decree all the blessings over yourself, present and future generations, over yourself spiritually, solically, physically, Socially, financially, governmentally, geographically, and professionally. So there are eight aspects, eight areas of life which need to be blessed. Sometimes I think as Christians, we focus on the spirit, but we forget everything else. All of us, the soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So that also needs to be ministered to. So the first one is salvation. We all need salvation. And we need to pray for salvation for those, for our loved ones, for the people around us to experience Christ. And sometimes you cannot be the witness to them. And I always say even to a spouse, you're not really, you can't be, you can't really preach to your spouse. The word of God says, be, be good, be of good character and good personality till that person is drawn into the kingdom of God. And I think even the word of God says that do deeds that will glorify your father. So it's by your actions, by the person that you are, the love that you display, the, the energy that you have. You know, people want to know what is it that you have, you know. Sometimes people ask me, why are you so happy? I'm happy because I love God and I'm connected to him and I'm doing great and mighty things. So why are you not happy, you know? So do things so that people will want to, to know that God, love that God, be with that God. So the first thing is salvation. And for me, something that's worked for me is I, I pray for the people around me, my friends, my siblings, um, my, my, the pillars, the partners, the family that I, I, I belong to, I pray that God would ordain and connect them with the right people who tell them about the gospel. Because maybe coming from me, they don't want to hear it, you know? But maybe they, if they connect with people who are their peers, people they respect, people they honor, people they work with, um, then they will begin to understand and to hear this salvation message. So pray for salvation. Definitely pray that none of your family would die without knowing God because separation from God uh, for eternity is something that's not really great. So pray for salvation for everybody in your family in all the eight aspects. Pray for healing. We need healing, you know. People need to move forward from healing. Some healing is, we need spiritual healing. We need healing of the mind, the will, the emotions. We need physical healing. We need healing of our finances. We need healing professionally. So decree all that in this season that there's a healing taking place in all aspects. We need deliverance. And, you know, for deliverance, I always like to share the story of I was a smoker and a, and a heavy smoker. And, you know, it got to the place where I wanted to stop smoking, but I couldn't. And it was so frustrating that I'd smoke and cry. I'm a dramaful person, so that's just me. So I would smoke and cry at the same time because it's something I hated doing. It's something that I could not imagine myself not doing. I was so addicted. Uh, but I... It, I prayed over it for a long time. I'd even fast. I'd go on fast to stop smoking. And then one day, I think I was I was in a retreat and I got prayed for and it ended. And I remember the funny thing was going to see my doctor who had been telling me uh, because I had other lifestyle diseases to stop smoking. And I used to tell him, I'm trying, but I can't. So when I finally did, I went and I said, oh, I'm stopped smoking. And he asked me how. And I said, I was prayed for and delivered. And then he says, do you want me to write that in the file? I said, of course. You'll... What else will you write? You have been telling me to stop smoking for so long. I've not been able to. I was prayed for, delivered, no more smoking. Weka kwa file. So that was the record. So also pray for deliverance. You know, if there's something that you're... And also sometimes I feel like families also have things that plague a, a family. It could be alcohol. It could be addiction to food. You know, I say addiction sometimes are very... Um, I don't know. They're, they're murky because some addictions you can see, some you can't see. Like they are functioning alcoholics, so you cannot see the alcoholics. Some of us who are addicted to food, like me in, in here, you'll see, you can see the results of the addiction to the food. But 
whatever it is that you're addicted to, an addiction is an addiction, and there's no greater addiction or smaller addiction. People are addicted to pornography and you can't see. People are addicted to sex, you can't see it. You know, it's not obvious every day. So pray for your present and future generations that they will be delivered and that God will deliver them. And then next comes... Um, obedience restoration and apostolic and prophetic establishment so we need to pray for obedience because it's not easy but it's the it's the road to fruit we saw in luke 1 19 that uh, no isaiah 1 19 that if you're obedient and willing you will eat the fruit of the land so in order to be fruitful in order to see fruit in your life there has to be obedience and there has to be willingness so begin to pray to obey and the bible says obedience is better than sacrifice so sometimes we've gone into 40 day fasts and god is looking for your obedience he's not looking for the fast now he's saying listen you have fasted you have prayed i've heard you obey me take this next step you know and some of us are given you know things that are easy others like me when I was told step out into into full-time ministry that's a hard thing to do I mean I have a child to feed I have rent to pay I have bills to pay I, I, what do you mean step out but I did and that might not be your instruction but that was my instruction but whatever instruction God is giving you obey it and pray it and then there's restoration. I believe there's a lot of restoration happening and God loves to restore, you know. In the book of Joel, he continues to tell us, I will restore. I will restore what was stolen from you. I think in the book of Job, he even tells us, what was stolen seven times, you can claim it and say, I want a sevenfold restoration. So begin to decree it and to, to call it forth. And then um, establishment, you know, things have to be established. And there's a time I was researching establishment and it means establishing structures and systems and organization. And because... Um, I'll also do a video on revival and reformation. That revival doesn't last until you reform, you, re, you put reformation into it. You put structures and systems into it. So even the things that God wants to do in your life, the things he wants to establish in your generations, present and future, you need to put structures and systems and an organized systems and processes to that thing that God is calling you to do or to the change that God is trying to make or to the family. You know, like for us, we just started a meeting as a family once a month and it's been a good meeting. And I remember, I don't know that we used to drink at the beginning, but somehow that drinking just fizzled out. You know, I don't know why, but it did. And that was a good thing. So we meet because also we want the children to grow, to know each other. We pray when we come together. You know, it's important. It's important that whatever traditions God is asking you to do, whatever he's asking you to establish, whatever he's asking you to do, to put organization and processes to you do. And remember, you can do them in all the 12 areas, you know. Have established organized processes in your finances, you know. Maybe that's what he's calling you to do. Get your finances together, you know. Um, maybe it's your body. Maybe it's what you're eating. Maybe it's how you're sleeping. Maybe it's exercise. There's so many things. And then after that comes... Um, overflow, abundance, and fruitfulness, that you just begin to decree that it's my season of overflow. I think Psalm, Psalm 23 talks about that, that God will prepare a table before your enemy, a yeah, table before you in the presence of your enemies, anoint your head with oil, and there will be an overflow. So don't pray for just enough, pray for an overflow, you know? Pray for overflow, and then abundance. You know, I love John 10.10, 10. it says that, that God came so that we could live life and live it more abundantly. So if you're not living abundant life, begin to call forth that abundant life. Begin to decree, begin to speak it, begin to see, say you will see it, you will see this abundant life. And then after abundance is fruitfulness. Again, there has to be fruit. You know, the Bible says you will know them by your fruit. You, we must know you by your fruit. We must see fruitfulness in your life. So you must begin to engage, decree and declare that God, that fruitfulness will come into your life. And then the last three are God's glory, God's honor, and God's power. Begin to pray, to decree and declare that you will see God's glory, God's honor, God's power manifested in your life. You know, I love the scripture. I think it's in Isaiah 61 where it says that we are oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Honestly, Christians, me and you, we've got to display the splendor and the glory of God. I have this habit of, you can, I'm sure you can see on, on the Facebook interaction, that of telling people by the grace of God. You know, when somebody will tell me something, I'll say, it's by the grace of God. Or they'll say, oh, Pastor Andrew, you're looking good. By his glory and for his glory and by his grace. This is not about me. This is about him using me as a vessel, an appointed vessel with a message. So God looks good. He's a God of excellence. And so he makes people look good. But you have to keep returning the glory back to him. You have to keep saying you deserve all glory, all honor, and all power. But I want to see God, that glory, your glory, your honor, your power manifested in my life. So begin to pray those things. Begin to decree those things. I must, I'm reminding myself the messages I have to do. I have to do one about the tongue. Because the word, this, this tongue is the mouth. It, it, the Bible says in it is life and death, you know. So speak life. Don't speak death. Speak life. So I'm encouraging you this Sunday, going through this season, going throughout the rest of your life, continuously decree and declare these are the 12 blessings in my life, the 12 blessings of the season. 
and I'm decreeing them over my life spiritually, solically, physically, socially, financially, governmentally, geographically, and professionally. Thank you so much for listening. Let us pray. Um, we'll also, if you want to give your life to Christ, I think I should lead you in that. We don't want to leave anybody behind. And I think I'll also talk about um, how how we can, what salvation is about. Because I said it's not about a list and do's. It's about a reconnection. And when you get saved, you reconnect your spirit man to God. And the best explanation is a Bluetooth analogy. I said that if you have a phone with, that does not have Bluetooth and you have a phone that has Bluetooth, no matter how hard I try to send the message, you cannot receive it because you're not enabled. So something, the spirit of man was disconnected from God and salvation is just connecting your spirit back to him so that now you can live that abundant life so that he can begin to download instructions and tell you what to do and you can begin to have a, a relationship with him. Um, so that's what salvation is about. So I'll pray and then I'll lead us to salvation. Heavenly Father, we want to bless you. We want to decree and declare the 12 blessings of this season to each and every person listening and to myself included, to our generations, present and future, Father. Show up, Lord. Let there be obedience. Let there be salvation in our lives, healing and deliverance that comes from God and is permanent. Let there be obedience and restoration and apostolic and prophetic establishment. Let there be overflow in our lives and the abundance that only God can give and fruitfulness that is rooted in God that will last generations. And then, Father, we want to experience your glory, your honor and your power. Let, let each and every one of us experience you, Lord. We want to decree and declare that even this nation will enjoy the 12 blessings of the season. And our marketplaces, the places that we work and the spaces that we exercise the purpose and the, the glory of God in our lives will also experience it. Our churches, our families, our marriages, our places of work and business and our places of, of purpose. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now if you want to give your life to Christ, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you this day. I surrender my life to you. I probably tried to do life by myself, but I want to experience you and I want to experience these 12 blessings um, of the season. And so I want to give my life to you. I surrender totally to you. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died for me and I want you to connect with me and I want you to take over all areas of my life. My life spiritually, solically, physically, socially, financially, governmentally, geographically, and professionally. Be the Lord and Savior of my life and let's do this life with, with you now. I want to do this life with you. So if you said that prayer, excellent. Uh, begin to connect with God, obey Him, find a fellowship, find a church, find a way to express that, read your word every day, connect, ask us, call in, tell us, and um, we'll see how we can direct each and every one of you. So happy Sunday, enjoy your Sunday, and um, God bless you. Bye-bye.